In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at tutorial 9, question 1.2. So, so far in the previous videos, we've seen how to use Taylor series to find approximations for functions and also how to differentiate and integrate functions, but we can also use them to find limits that we can't find using other methods. If we start having a look at question 1.2, we've got the limit as x tends to 0 of sine of x squared minus x squared over 2x to the 6th, and if we substitute in x to the 0 to see what happens, we get, well, sine of 0 is 0, minus 0 over 0, which is a 0 over 0 case, and we know that this means that we need to do more work. So if we have a look at this, the techniques that we have for solving limits of this kind, we could try and use L'Hopital's rule, but if you have a look at this, it's not going to help very much. Um, and there's not an awful lot else that we can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace sine of x squared with its Taylor series. So we know, and you should make sure that you do know this for the exam, that sine of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus and so on and on and on. And so we can find the Taylor series for sine of x squared by replacing every x in our sine of x with an x squared. So we get sine of x is equal to an x squared minus, now we've got an x squared all cubed over 3 factorial plus x squared fifth over 5 factorial. And let's add on another term, we've got a minus x squared to the seventh over 7 factorial, and so on and on. And if we just tidy this up a bit, that means we've got an x squared minus x to the 6th over 3 factorial plus x to the 10 over 5 factorial minus x to the 14 over 7 factorial, and you can see the pattern that's building up here. So now what we do is we use this Taylor series in our limit. So our limit as x goes to 0 sine x squared minus x squared over 2x to the 6 is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 and now I'm going to replace my sine of x squared with an x squared minus x to the 6 3 factorial plus x to the 10 over 5 factorial minus x to the 14 over 7 factorial plus and that's my sine of x squared and I've got a minus x squared still in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I've got my 2x to the 6. And now we see rather conveniently that we can actually cancel some of these terms. So if we look at the numerator, I've got an x squared and a minus x squared. So that's going to cancel. So my limit as x goes to 0 is, and now I'm going to write this as a bunch of different fractions instead of one large numerator or denominator. So I've got minus x to the 6 over 3 factorial, and that's divided by 2x to the 6th. And then I've got x to the 10 over 5 factorial, and that's divided by 2x to the 6th. And I've got minus x to the 14 over 7 factorial times 2x to the 6th, and I'd have a whole bunch more terms. And now notice what happens. In my first term, I've got an x to the 6th on the numerator and in the denominator, so those will cancel. So I've got a minus 1 over 3 factorial times 2 for my first term. In my next term, I've got an x to the 10 over x to the 6th, so that's going to give me an x to the 4th. And in my third term, I've got an x to the 14 over x to the 6th. So that's going to give me 
and x to the 8. So let's just write that out so we can see that clearly. I've got a minus 1 over, now 3 factorial is 6 times 2 is 12, plus, and I've got an x to the 4 over 5 factorial times 2, minus x to the 8 over 7 factorial times 2, and so on and on. But notice that when we actually take the limits, well, the limit doesn't affect our minus a twelfth, so our limit as x goes to 0 of minus 1 over 12 is just minus 1 over 12, but our limit as x goes to 0 of x to the 4 is 0, and of x to the 8th is 0, and you can see that any higher order terms that we had would have x to some power, and so those would all be 0. So we end up with our answer that our limit is minus 12.